So what is the treatment of hyperkalemia? First of all, we follow the general measures. You should stop all exogenous potassium intake and if blood transfusion is needed, you should use washed PRBC for transfusion. Then comes your specific measures. Whenever you have to take specific measures, you need to understand one basic principle. It is the serum potassium and not total body potassium which is responsible for most of the changes. Serum potassium level, if it is very high, it tends to produce changes in the membrane potential of cardiac myocytes and so it can generate life-threatening arrhythmias. So before we normalize the serum potassium, our first aim is to prevent arrhythmias from happening. So if MCQ, there are two types of MCQs which are asked here. If question says a patient of hyperkalemia comes to you, a child is diagnosed to have hyperkalemia, what is the next step in management? The next step in management will always be stabilize the cardiac membrane and that is done by giving calcium gluconate. It is only th when you have stabilized the calcium membrane, the cardiac membrane by giving calcium, then you will move on to reducing the serum potassium levels. If the question says what is the next step in reducing serum potassium level, the answer will not be calcium gluconate because calcium gluconate does not reduce serum potassium level. It only prevents the ECG changes the cardiac arrhythmias from happening. So the specific measure, the first immediate goal is to prevent arrhythmias by stabilizing the cardiac membrane. You will give 10% calcium gluconate at a dose of 0.5 to 1 ml per kg over 5 to 10 minutes under ECG monitoring. You will stop the infusion if bradycardia develops and it is given over almost 3 times even more slowly over 30 minutes in a patient who is receiving digitalis because chances of toxicity can develop if it is given too rapidly. Please remember that IV calcium gluconate is the first step, always first step in the management of hyperkalemia but it cannot reduce serum potassium levels. It cannot reduce serum potassium levels. All these points which I mentioned, all these in various forms have been asked three times in MCQs in super speciality exams. So very, very important calcium gluconate and its related points. Then we move further. Second goal is to after you have stabilized the cardiac membrane, you will reduce serum potassium level. The first thing that we do for that is enhancing the cellular uptake of potassium. Rather than asking the body to remove it, we ask the cells to take it up so that the serum potassium level decreases. How do we do that? First is insulin glucose infusion. Regular insulin in a dose of 0.3 unit per gram of glucose is given over 2 hours. It works within 30 minutes. In an ideal world, insulin alone is sufficient to produce movement of potassium inside the cell. But if you use insulin alone, it will cause hypoglycemia. So that is why we use a combination of insulin plus glucose. Right? Second is sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate, we take 1 to 2 milliculents per kg. It is diluted and given over 30 minutes. It is preferred in hyperkalemic patients, those who are having metabolic acidosis. This also acts by moving the potassium inside the cell. Third is beta agonist, which are given via nebulized route. You can use salbutamol, which is also called as albuterol. If that is not available, turbutalin can also be used, but more commonly salbutamol nebulization is used. What is the advantage of this? You are giving through nebulization. So even young kids, you can use them. You need not put a IV catheter and it can be given through the nebulization route. So that is the benefit of giving this. This also acts by making potassium move from blood to inside the cell. Second is reducing total body potassium by enhanced excretion. Now the total body potassium will come down. You can use exchange resins. The commonly used exchange resin is sodium polystyrene sulfonate. In short, it is written as SPS. It is also called as k -exalate. It is the common name k -exalate resin. It is given at the dose of 1 gram per kg, can be given orally or rectal anemas can also be given. If that is not available, the second alternative is petiromer, which is given only orally. Petiromer ka anema form is not available. If urine output is normal, you can use loop diuretics, for example, furuzamide. But in general, in practice, although it is not mentioned in Nelson, we see that if you give furuzamide, the chances of hypovolemia is significantly more in these patients. If you have to use them, they should be used in a lower dose range that is 0.5 to 1 mg per kg. And you should always ensure that the urine output is normal in these patients. Clinically, what I have found, what I have seen, what my colleagues have seen that uh, furuza might use if you use it more than 1 mg per kg for reducing potassium levels for this purpose, 
ideally it should not be used but if you are trying to use it for this reason for any indication if other drugs cannot be used it has a danger of reducing the blood pressure as well so watch out for not only urine output i would say if you are using this drug also watch for bp and the overall intravascular volume in the patient now what is the management of severe hyperkalemia where the renal function is compromised in these patients you need to do dialysis so dialysis will be needed and hemodialysis will be preferred over peritoneal dialysis peritoneal dialysis can be done it is done indeed but efficacy wise hemodialysis is found to be superior and faster acting what are the indications of dialysis in hyperkalemia can be a potential mcq it includes indications like severe refractory hyperkalemia not responding to medical management hyperkalemia with compromised renal function or oligouria or anuric patient hyperkalemia associated with acute event life threatening event where very high potassium load is coming for example tumor lysis syndrome even some patients of malignant hyperthermia will eventually require hemodialysis to save the life of the patient so these are the three indications that you need to remember additional long term management for hyperkalemia includes for adrenal insufficiency or ch related hyperkalemia you will give maintenance dose of hydrocortisone that is glucocorticoid plus fludrocortisone will be effective in these patients and drug or dose modification will be needed if hyperkalemia is drug induced you need to manage the primary underlying cause in most conditions as well and obviously you will reduce the dietary intake of potassium additional potassium supplements should be avoided although their role in efficacy is not very clear but things which are high potassium like bananas like uh, pineapple oranges papayas and even your coconut water their use should be relatively restricted in a patient who has undergone hyperkalemia although how much they are effective and whether they are effective at all is still a matter of conjecture but for practice you should remember at least the child should be the parent should be advised not to feed the child any of these things which i just mentioned subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from preplada